our uh, June 3rd Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. Is introduction of new members. Uh, we have Sarah Schrader. Heidi Reynolds, we think, is on her way. Uh, and here she is. Right there. Oh my gosh, now I'm forced to sit in the middle. <laughs> I mean, it's like they make you sit up front, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. It is uh, 30 minutes too long. Or can... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Heidi Reynolds, Thank you. and uh, would like to learn about our new members, but also thought, I just recall, as I was a new member and everyone got going, I really didn't know anybody else, which took me a little longer to figure out. So just starting on this end, and we'll work our way down, we'll all introduce ourselves and just a little bit about ourselves. And I am Sue Easterday. I've been on the Parks Commission about 18 months, and my original reason for joining or the reason it, I was suggested that I join was my interest in parks uh, and volunteering for cleaning up invasive species, that type of work. So uh, my alders <coughs> spoke very kindly about me. <laughs> She's next in line to introduce herself. Uh, I'm a retired registered nurse and um, interested in all aspects of park and recreation. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Julia Riata Frata. I am the alder representing the council, and I have been an alder for almost six years. This is entering my seventh. Um, so I am very happy to be with you because, you know, I have a couple of projects that they are parks related. And so it was great when the mayor say, uh, appoint me to the parks. This is a committee that I really, really want to be part. So thank you. I'm Patrick Cheney. Uh, the, I'm in my second appointment term on the Park Commission now. Um, been in Fitchburg 25 years. I live right next to McGaw Park. And that was a uh, when I was looking at a house uh, there in that neighborhood, um, McGaw Park was a big selling point for me for buying that house. So I've been very interested in McGaw Park and uh, right away started um, doing various volunteer work, organizing a group Re reopening the uh, hiking trail system in the woods and things like that. Uh, but I have often gone to other parks. I've been to every single park in Fitchburg. Uh, I'm Heidi Reynolds, and um, I have lived in Fitchburg, I guess, I don't know, five years or more. And I have uh, two daughters, one in her second year in college and are finishing up her second year, and then one who will be graduating next weekend, uh, but of course this weekend is graduation party, so I am crazy lady these next two weeks. Um, and I work for the town of Middleton, and one of my duties is that I sort of facilitate the Parks Commission, um, which is something that I, I love doing, whether it's, you know, getting trees planted or mulch for the, you know, the playgrounds or, or, or whatever it is. Uh, we have so many beautiful parks down in this area, so so this is this is near and dear to my heart too. And I'm hoping to learn something here that I can share with my my people at the town. Hi, my name is Katie McDonald. Uh, I have been on the Parks Commission for about a year now, and I've been a resident of Fitchburg for about three years. I live in the Wildwood area. Um, I have an elementary schooler and a middle schooler who both make great use of the Fitchburg Park system and our rec department. My son's off at baseball practice right now on, the new, on one of the Fitchburg teams. Um, and professionally, I'm a civil engineer with a focus on parks. I'm Sarah Schroeder. I've been in District 3 since 2005. And much like Patrick had mentioned, for choosing locations, the parks of Fitchburg were a huge driver for me and that I just think Fitchburg has fantastic parks. So I've lived by McKee to begin with and then uh, Swan Creek and now Quarry Hill. And I was on the Parks Commission starting in 2017 
and had been on the Parks Commission through April 2021, and I'm very happy to be back. I think it's a great commission, and I think that just the parks are just a huge asset for the city, so I think that we do fantastic work here. My name is Chris Sina. I've been a resident of Fitchburg for three years and member of the Parks Commission for one year. I live in the uptown area and I am a registered landscape architect, so I have an interest in the, the, the design and the use of all sorts of public spaces, uh, not the least of which is parks. So um, that's sort of uh, what piqued my interest in the Parks Committee. And uh, um, so I am really interested in seeing how uh, particularly new parks take shape and how they can be um, you know, uh, made to be uh, as good of a resource for the city as possible. I am Scott Endel, and I'm the director of the department, and I've been here since uh, 2006, uh, and certainly would like to thank everyone for their time and commitment to the, the Park, Rec, and Forestry Department. Uh, we appreciate it, uh, that's for sure, and, um, and I am your staff, the staff liaison to the council and finance and all of those kinds of things, so certainly appreciate your time and efforts. And, it's a, th th this is where this is where things happen is on the park park commission. So you're in the right spot. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Um, now we'll move on to item two, uh, approval of the May minutes. I'll move approval of the minutes. Um, at Scott's request, I did send in some edits to the draft minutes, as, as well as I added a few lines just for the sake of e explaining some of the um, discussion that we had. All of that is included already in what's posted. There is one edit that I need to add on since it was posted on here. You need a second first. What? You need to have a second. Okay. A second. We, okay. okay, so now you can okay. I know there is steps like that. We, we kind of do things a little <laughs> different than the council here, but yes, Do I know. Do we have a second? I second. Oh, you did. Okay, great. Thank you. So one edit is there's a line that I uh, suggested that is added into there. It says, Sue Easterday assumed the role of chair for the rest of this meeting, but that line needs to be after Sue was elected to be chair, which would be after where it says David Gorder moved and then right before number four public appearance. That would be the right spot. Otherwise, nothing else from me. Any other corrections to the minutes or additions? We will have a vote. We've had a motion and a second. Some discussion. All in favor of approving the minutes as Aye. edited? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Um, item three is our public appearances. I don't see that anyone has registered and... Uh, you have nothing on FACT TV, uh, so we can move on to um, item four, which is a, a looking for a motion to review and approve the agenda in a second. I'll move to approve the agenda as given. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Anyone need a moment to look at the agenda one last time before we vote? Okay. Um, all in favor of approving the agenda as it is written, aye. 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 Opposed? All right, our agenda is approved. Now we're on to discussion items 5A, discussion of meeting times and meeting length. And uh, Scott and I had a conversation. It was, I asked the question um, about discussing whether we could meet earlier than seven, if that's something the group as it would have a consensus on doing. Um, it doesn't have to change. Everybody signed on knowing it was going to be seven, so this is not a, an effort to force anyone into a change if this is what's best. But um, I'm a retired person, so I'm not the one to make the call. Um, is there anything... Um, Anyone wants to discuss about it? Was I supposed to ask for a motion? It's just discussion? Okay, we could. All right, okay. So for my part, I can really meet any time. And I don't know if people mind us doing the same thing, just going down around the room. If there's um, 
stating perhaps the earliest they'd want to meet or could be able to meet because of their other obligations? Does that sound fair as a way to start? Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. You are playing with my book. Uh, so I can go, um, I can start at five o'clock, you know, but I am flexible. Uh, I have a flexible job, you know, but, um, but I can start, you know, from 4.30 up. But I understand that, you know, people as kids in the school or coming from work, but I can be flexible. I, I don't have any limitation in myself. I'm also retired. Um, I would uh, not like to see this drastically changed if we did. I, I was thinking, you know, if we moved it up at 6.30 or something when I saw this uh, suggestion. Um, just, a, you know, a slight adjustment, see how it works out and everything. Uh, I am presuming that we may have an audience out there that actually watches us and I wouldn't like to throw it too far off of our usual starting time. There's one condition that I would add if we did change the meeting time, because this has caught me and thrown me in the past for things like some council meetings. If we did change the starting time, I would like to see on, on the agenda here, as has been done sometimes, not always, but I would really like to see this for any time that a meeting changes its regular time to put an extra line at the top in the agenda saying star star note new meeting time or something like that to, to warn people that hey, it's not the usual as you've been thinking of for years or decades or something. It's um, now going to be this draws attention to it so that you don't catch people off guard and start and then they come in thinking they're on time and they're all late and throws people. So that's one thing. If we did change it, I'd like to see that added on for several meetings afterwards. Heidi. Uh, I would have no opposition to moving the time either. Uh, the earliest, uh, like Julia, that I would be able to be here would be five. Um, but aside from that, no uh, constraints either way. Okay. I also have a fairly flexible schedule. Um, I think the earliest I would prefer to start is probably 5 or 5.30. Okay. I'm definitely in favor of moving it up if that works. I unfortunately couldn't probably make it until 6. Okay. My mic is on the fritz, I think. I could do a little bit earlier as well. Uh, 6 would be um, a about as early as I'd care to go also. I could stretch it to 5.30, but I think that's about as early as I could go. Uh, and, and maybe just some additional information. We did check with uh, FACT TV uh, to make sure that we didn't conflict with a, with a meeting prior to to this and there, there wouldn't be any, any, con, you know, any, any conflicting meeting. So we could, we could change it as, as the commission feels they, they'd like to. Any other points people would like to make? Otherwise, a motion? Um, I guess one comment from me. Um, I, you know, I signed up for this and everything, and I wanted to be on here, and I actually uh, attended in the audience of the Park Commission for actually 15 years before I got appointed. So I'm prepared to be here as long as it takes into the evening. Uh, but... I kind of, in turn, don't like it that the council, especially, is the one that can sometimes go midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., which I think is really late. Uh, my only point that if, if we have a lot of things on an agenda, I think rather than try and, you know, struggle through and fight through a long agenda, my preference would be, you know, maybe break, it, break an agenda and have an extra meeting if we really, at some rare time, have that much going on rather than try and go, you know, four, five, six hours. Okay. Um, regarding the idea of starting at six, which is, seems to be the limiting time, do we have a motion on that portion, just the, the start time? And then, and then we can have a separate, I was, a separate discussion about a time limit, does that make sense? 
it, would that be fair, given the way the, I asked for it to go on the agenda? Okay. I, I'll make a motion for 6.30. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Um, those in favor of 6.30 as a start time? Can I ask just a quick yes. question? So is there a reason why you're thinking 6.30? Just it seemed as though I was getting a vibe that maybe people wanted a little earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, Is there was there something in particular that caught your attention? Not, not really. I just, I wouldn't like to see it. Like several of you said, 5 o'clock. I think that's, that's pretty drastic. No, that makes sense. I just was curious, yeah. Otherwise, not, no particular reason, just, you know. I think the plan commission changed from 7 o'clock to 6.30, didn't they? They did. So I, that's why I suggested a half hour time change, but I, no, no reason otherwise. Thanks. Is there any uh, appetite for 6 as opposed to 6.30? I'm pretty in, indifferent. I think either could work, but is other people's thoughts on that? Yeah, I would prefer to go to 6 o'clock, so... You know, so, then, yeah. So. What we should do if somebody wanted to make an amendment to that and suggest six, then we vote on that, and if it passes or fails, then we go ahead. And if that fails, then we're back to 6.30. Mm -hmm. I can make that motion to amend it to six. Okay. And Second. Then. Okay. So we first vote on the amendment, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are voting on the amendment motion to adjust our meet start time to 6 p.m., all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So that has passed. Mm -hmm. So my main motion then? The main motion is to meet at 6.30. Those no, are no we amended it, so it's 6 now. 6 then. Correct. Okay. So we don't vote at all on the no, original? No, we, we do. Okay. So the motion to start at 6.30, those in favor? No. We amended 6.30 to be 6. Yes, I understand that. Who's on first? <laughs> no, but he's correct. The, 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 the main motion now is 6 o'clock. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we vote again on the main motion. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Those in favor of the main motion of starting at 6, in favor? Aye. 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 I, um, I would like my condition added on about star star note new meeting time for the next four months. Is that, that agreeable? Sure, yes. Okay. Okay, in favor? In, yes. Aye. 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 Okay. So the second part of the discussion, <clears throat> and it, we could think about it, we can do something tonight, uh, would be to have a time limit in our schedule for the meeting end time. It might help us. Sometimes, in my recollection, the meetings can go long unnecessarily, and I may have been at fault for part of that at times, so I'd have to check myself and have others. That's why I'm sitting here, so you can let me know. You know point to your watches. But uh, uh, does anyone have any thoughts to share about an idea like that? I would sort of disagree on the unnecessarily part. You know, I, the way I feel is I'm here for the meeting, whatever it takes. Although, you know, like I say, not four, five, six hours. Um, we could always decide in a meeting if we're really getting tired of it and all, we could decide, I think at the time in the meeting that we could um, adjourn or recess to like another even special meeting or the next month if we wanted to or so, I suppose, if we really felt that way. I, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to see a specific time that the meeting has to end. I know the council goes automatically to 11 and has to amend, or what is it, move to extend beyond that. Um, I know that's one process. Mm -hmm. any, any other we don't want to hit 11 o'clock. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I have been, you know, in my six year in the city, I have been part of several commission and committees where we have longer agendas. 
And I'm going to tell you one that I, you know, I was a chair for many, many years, and is SIDA. And we used to have a lot of points to talk, but we have in SIDA the meeting are from 7 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock, period. And we try to, uh, we need to try to do everything in two hours. You know, and we have control, and sometimes with the meeting get out to people and start talking on issues that they are not in the agenda. We say, it's not in the agenda, we shouldn't talk, we can put it in the next meeting, in the agenda. So, and I have been, because I have been following you guys for a long time because of my prior project, and sometimes I see that you guys sometimes go and talk and talk and go and in the same topic and topic and topic. And I see the chair is the one who got to say, stop it, we already discussed, move forward. You know, so I think we can do, I think that with the content, because we don't have too many ordinance or resolution to go through. Um, so it's more like a discussion or maybe um, Scott give a summary of activity, what is happening in parks. But um, I think we can, we can do this meeting in two hours, and we should, you know, we shouldn't be spending more than two hours in this type of meeting. This is my personal opinion, for experience. Sarah? I like Julia's comments, that I do think parks, we do have a kind of tendency to jump topics, and I think that if we really are strict on kind of, it's on the agenda, that's where the discussion rotates. I mean, just that, I think that, I think that we could run more efficiently, just but I think we have to be a little bit, keep every all of ourselves and each other accountable and just um, politely remind one another that we need to stay on topic. And I think that we can condense the time frame. And I'd add to that, that that I've sort of been keeping track on how long our minutes or our meetings go and we do usually wrap up right around that two hour mark. So I don't think that we need to feel like we'd be restricting ourselves too much by, by saying limiting it to two hours. So only, you know, we've had a few that two and a half, three, but usually that's when we get kind of caught in that circular sort of discussion that isn't necessarily productive. So I, I don't think two hours would be a struggle for us. Uh, there we go. Um, if it helps or hurts our case, I don't know what the town of Middleton, our meetings tend to average about that as well. Um, I think people, park people are so passionate about their green space and as well they should be. So, I mean, I agree with you that it's not necessarily wasting time, but I think two hours is a, a pretty good, you know, and, and we can always table things you know, to discuss it another time if, if we don't need to. Any other comments? Uh, well, I'm hearing two hours and we could uh, set that as a specific goal in the form of a motion that we vote on. And uh, by doing so, we've uh, put ourselves on notice that time is important. Um, we have staff that are here all day long, and then they're putting in hours in winter, driving home at night. Not, you know, not everybody's got a short drive home, et cetera, and they've got a life outside of the building, as much as we'd like to think that they're at our beck and call at all hours. But uh, um, so I would hope that we could have a motion to uh, state specifically that our meetings will be a two hour schedule. Patrick. Um, I wouldn't like to just set it like a hard deadline. So what I might suggest is what if we say that we plan for two hours and when we hit a two hour mark, which starting at six would be 8 p.m. and then we make a motion like the council does to extend beyond there. So we can kind of choose at that time. If we're still going, we can see what we've got to go, see if it's kind of worth it or whatever at the time and vote to extend. How does that sound to everybody? Does that sound fair? Okay. Now another idea uh, that I wanted to mention, and I remember Scott making a comment long ago when something took a long time and you laughed and said, boy, I thought that was just gonna be a five minute discussion. 
And I know that some committees actually put on their agenda the estimated time it is going to take to manage the question. And that may not work here, but just keep it in the back of your minds. Sometime we might want to talk about doing something like that too. So um, unless there's any other remarks people would like to make, a motion to... Uh, I've seen that too. RCC does that on their agendas. I don't know how they manage that because you are... A five, what we think is a five minute can go yeah. way longer. Oh, right. And I'm not, so. yeah, I'm not suggesting that for right now for this topic for right now, but um, w is anyone comfortable making a motion to have a specific two hour window for our meetings? I'd make a motion to move towards having two hour meetings with the opportunity to extend upon voting. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, so then that does not put a hard deadline that at two hours we walk out. We just decide at the time. We, right. Then we have, at two hours we look at what's left to do and decide how we're going to handle it. Yeah. Okay. Um, any idea of what we would do if we decided, I, you know, can't say where we would be in the agenda, but what we would do with the rest of the agenda at that point? Mm -hmm. Julia. Julia. Um, so... I think what we need to do is first, you know, when we have agenda with resolution that we need to approve, we should, which they should be first on the, in, the, in the agenda. And most at the end, this is what we do I see, that most at the end of the agenda is a, a staff report, you know, like my Zimmerman report about what happened. And sometimes he go fast, you know, and he, he cannot finish, he cannot finish, he send an email to all of us after the meeting and say, this is, you know, Mm -hmm. We do that, but this is more informational at the end of the meeting, so this is what I say that I, I will say that with two hours it's going to be enough to do it. So we, um, A couple of years ago or so, we did revise our agenda because it used to be, I don't remember exactly how, but it used to be kind of re, um, in a different order, and we changed it so that our discussion action are at the top and then the communication and then, you know, like you're yeah, saying, the yeah. lesser and lesser yeah, that's yeah, yeah. towards In the In order of importance. Yeah. Yes, right. Yeah. And that works well. Yeah. So we have a motion. Any further discussion? Okay. Those in favor of the two-hour limit with the opportunity to extend in any given time at a meeting. Aye. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That motion carries as well. Now we're on to item B, inclusive playground naming proposal. Scott, you have a story Yes, I, I, I did include in your packet, I received a request from Becky Churley. Uh, she's the director of CI Pediatric Therapy Centers here in town. Uh, as you all may be aware, we're doing an inclusive playground adjacent to the splash pad at McKee. Uh, and she is is recommending or, or proposing that we that we name the playground Paul's Playground, uh, and she goes into a, an explanation on on why she feels that that, that would be appropriate. I, I did include in your in your packet uh, the the city does have a uh, a park naming a policy, uh, which indicates uh, reasons for naming a park. Uh, those kinds of things, and, and certainly uh, the selection criteria, the CI Therapeutics, they did provide a $50,000 uh, contribution to this, so I, I think they certainly uh, would qualify, you know, under the criteria that we have to, uh, to, name, uh, to name this uh, Paul's Playground, uh, and if the Park Commission is, is good with it, uh, the policy also includes the 60-day uh, public notification where we would uh, public, uh, publicly let everybody know that we're proposing to do this. I would bring those, uh, those comments, if we receive any, back to the Park Commission. Uh, and then the Park Commission would say, you know, uh, this sounds good. And then what they would do then is recommend to the, to the council for final approval for that, uh, for that name. Um, you know, and certainly this would not restrict other contributions or other uh, opportunities for recognition for people that may be contributing to the uh, to the inclusive playground for a bench or, or whatever it might be but but certainly I think it 
you know, it really does fall within the, uh, the criteria that we have within our, our, our park naming policy. Julia, do you have comment as you've been so intimately involved with this park? Uh, you know, it took me by surprise to read this in the package because I saw that the naming was happening after, you know, we built, you know, because we don't know if we're gonna have another company that they want the name into. They want to bring another 50 or $60,000 check and they say, you know what I mean? So I don't have any anything against this, you know. I think is uh, the timing, I think it's too early, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know, that one is my, but I am fine. I know, uh, I would like to know more about Paul, you know. I would like to know if the family is still living in Fitchburg. Um, I don't know if we need, we need to know his last name because I would like to know more about who was this Paul, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, I think that, I was thinking that the naming of the part will be another, in another phase, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Um, and this is a very compelling story mm -hmm. about a person who really worked very hard to be mm -hmm whole and complete and everything uh, that they accomplished, they had to work hard for. Mm -hmm. um, and so given that there may be others in the group, the, your core group, that have conceived of the park and worked on, um, I had almost thought of the idea, even though a name has to come through the Parks Commission and then onto the council, that it would start with your group mm -hmm. and maybe this um, suggestion, this letter it from this family should come, go to your group yeah. and um, coordinate any other naming suggestions that way and then funnel that yeah. your choices or choice or choices to us later. Can I? Sure. Uh, the other thing about the naming, this is what we, we didn't even talk about naming yet, is like maybe the yeah, one thing that I have in mind was to make it public so uh, people can bring ideas to how to name, you know, um, the, the, the inclusive playground, even create a logo or, you know what I mean? But open to the community and say, okay, we are naming the inclusive playground. What do you think it should be the name? Send out your compelling story. So we open this to everyone, you know what I mean? I know, not, I, 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 I know that CI for a $50,000 and for one of the because of, uh, they are one of the biggest sponsors of the uh, private sponsor for the, for the park, they have naming, um, you know, what would say? Influence. Influence because of the money that they contributed, you know what I mean? But I think, this is what I say, we haven't even talked in the Inclusive Playground group about naming yet, so I don't know, Scott. Well, I, 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 I think certainly, this could be taken to the, you know, to our, our planning group to see what their thoughts are. Uh, and, and I guess I, I, just to be clear too, that there's going to be other, I would suspect other contributions that are going to be coming and, and there'll be other opportunities to, you know, to recognize those, those uh, whether it's a shade structure or, or whatever it might be. So, you know, the idea that you know, Paul's Playground is going to be the exclusive sponsor or the exclusive naming rights. You know, I don't think this is the in, that's the intent of it. It's just kind of an idea to to recognize uh, this young man and, and certainly their their contribution that they that they made to the project. Uh, but certainly, I think it. You know, it, the Park Commission, if you you know say, well, let's let's take it back to the. Um, uh, to the planning group and, and see what they think and, and get some some feedback from them. I, I think that's certainly appropriate. And we're you know we're in no no rush. We've got you know the the, the project is going to be ongoing and and even when the project is built, that doesn't mean that we can't do some additional naming rights or 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 identification of of contributors. So I think that that would make sense. Okay, so would we need uh, any type of a motion, or would this be just a communication back to uh, no, CI? I, yeah, I, I, I would say you could make an official motion that we've discussed it, and we're, you know, you're interested in seeing what the, um, what the design or the, you know, the inclusive playground committee has to say about it. So, 
Can I ask a question? Oh, I'm sure. sorry. No, you can go ahead. Um, so when we talk about inclusive, is that in terms of having equipment and different things for uh, uh, children of other abilities? Yes. Okay, thank you. Patrick. As I was reading through the uh, naming uh, rules or policy here, um, I was noticing that it says facilities as well. So one thing we might consider along the way as far as the inclusive playground and any other parks, um, we don't, I don't think we're, we're limited to just giving a park a name, uh, such as let's say in the inclusive playground, if there's different facilities, a, a playground set here, something else there, yeah, they might get names individually for those things yeah. too. Yeah, and Scott, um, I think that's what you're alluding to as well, that everything is expensive in a park and especially a park like this, so major donors um, are so appreciated that right. they can be recognized that and way there, as well. And, and there may be a, a, a special need that, that Paul had and, and a specific piece of equipment is, is kind of designed for that special need, so it would make sense that this is Paul's swing or whatever it might be. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? All right, so we are looking for a motion then to uh, refer, communicate to CI that um, their contribution is appreciated and their suggestion is also appreciated, but we will refer it to the park planning committee itself to manage all the naming, uh, the preliminary naming work. Do I have a motion for something along those lines? I'd make a motion to refer back to the park planning group for their feedback and recommendation. Second. Okay, we have the motion, the second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. <clears throat> uh, item C is the Stoner Park Pr Stoner Prairie Park Planning <laughs> update. And uh, uh, I'm sorry that I didn't think to have the minutes in the packet. Uh, I, Scott, I think you were able to get them sent out later. I, I did. And yeah. I've got mine here. And uh, so I'm sure it, you probably breeze through them. And th in addition to anything, I might say Christopher and uh, Katie are on the committee and they may certainly add anything that, that they'd like to say. I think the main focus or the main accomplishment of our last meeting was um, a process for creating a survey. And there's several people working on a little survey subgroup. Um, we had a deadline for submitting questions. Um, and so we haven't gotten a report back yet. I know um, our meeting is the 19th if that's a Wednesday, the next meeting of the planning committee. And so before that, the group will see what's been created so far as survey questions and we'll discuss it then. Now that was the, the main accomplishment. We also went over dollar items. Janelle Rice took us through, I think a lot of the same figures we've seen over time about how the money comes into the project in phases and phases and there are some contingencies. Is there anything either of you would like to add? Katie, Chris, any questions? I think that was a fairly good synopsis. Uh, it, it is a large group that's on that planning committee and they all had some very good comments. There was a lot of good discussion during that initial meeting. Yeah. I thought so too. Yeah. Okay, well that's simply an update and we can move on. Um, we've got as uh, item 5D, the splash pad concessions, and Scott, take it away. And, and, and actually, uh, uh, Scott from, from Kona Ice reached out to me to see uh, whether or not we were going to be looking for a concession stand vendor for the splash pad. I, I did respond to him and, and actually shipped to him a copy of the, uh, the contract that we had in 2020 and was looking for some feedback from him. I have not heard anything back from him. Uh, so I guess what I'm looking for from the, the Park Commission is 
you know, a consensus or, or an okay that, you know what, if Scott gets back to me soon, uh, that you would be okay with me saying, you know what, Scott, provide the, uh, the concession stand or the concessions for us. I will report that in 2014, we actually did a request for proposal uh, and, and Scott was the only one that provided a proposal. And that year he gave a $250 one-time uh, check to provide the services. And from 2015 through 2019, that amount increased to 400. Uh, I do require we ask him to provide a, a financial report at the end of the year uh, just to kind of uh, give us some information as far as how much he's bringing in and all of those kinds of things. But at the end of the day, it really, you know, is a service that we're providing to the customers at the Splash Pad, and, you know, it's $400. Um, so I guess my thought would be that, like I say, if, if, you're, if you're still uh, good with that, then I can continue on and, and try to get that uh, figured out or if there's some other suggestions, I guess. Okay, I see Hulea. Thank you, Sue. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, you know, um, one of one is why we don't open this to to everyone to see what are the food cards that we can bring. You know, here it's more like going to after one, and I don't feel comfortable doing that. I will feel if we are more transparent in our process, we should open like an RFP because maybe there are more food card or other type of card that we don't know that we will be very interesting to provide those services in the in this area. Um, second, um, the other thing that is missing this contract is uh, insurance, some sort of liability. Something happened, uh, if I am buying something from the food car and it's a food poison or whatever happened, who is liable here, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I think we need to, the city should provide, should ask also in that um, in this, con I don't know, it's a contract or proposal that they need to submit proof of in 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 liability insurance. Um, um, so my other, my accountant brain is going to say, <laughs> why a fixed fee? You know, why we don't ask a percentage of the sale? You know what I mean? So, so th this is my my question, but. Okay, Patrick. If, if I remember, I think the uh, the flat fee was uh, in lieu of a percentage, just on the idea that a percentage needs the calculations and waiting for the end of the year to work it out and then pay at the end. So the flat fee was just, hey, give us a check, at, I guess, at the beginning. And then their incentive is sell as much as they can during the year. That's correct, and, and actually part of his reports, and I could provide those reports, is what he brings in, so. That, that would be interesting for us to see, mm -hmm. so that we're not, um, hopefully he's not just making $401 in a summer, uh, but if he's making $4,000, you know, we should maybe reconsider the fee. And we did uh, when I when we did do it back in 2014, we did an RFP, and we can certainly we can certainly do that uh, again to see to see if there's other providers uh, of those types of things. So, what is the um, time frame for doing the RFP? We're already at the point right now where the splash pad is open. Well, they would it would yeah they it would take some time that's for sure, and then you know coming back to the park commission and and all of those kinds of things. So, it would take some time, uh, and like I say, he. He just reached out to me. I said, "Sure, I'll take it to the park commission. What What do you What do you propose?" And crickets. I didn't I okay. didn't hear anything from him. So, and and at the end of the day, we're you know I don't know if it's really you know a money maker. It's just kind of providing providing the service to the to the customers there, and they they certainly have to have a Dane County health permit and and those kinds of things. So, not not to slight the. Um, you know, the insurance and the liability and, and those kinds of things, but. Patrick. Are those things in the contract already, like Julie asked? Insurance liability, is that covered already? Well, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to look. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see it. Yeah. But it's, you know, pretty standard if, he op if this person operates anywhere else, he's probably got it readily available. And I, I have another question, but when I read through uh, this right here, 
Um, I probably can't find the exact par paragraph, but well, there was something about it cannot be connected to any facilities, and specifically, I was wondering when I read that, are they allowed to plug into an outlet? Are they allowed to hook onto a water faucet? No. So they're entirely self-sufficient. It's all self-contained. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it, it seemed a little bit unclear about that because you know anybody who comes in and has a party of any sort, there are outlets, there's water faucets. Mm -hmm. Well, the water faucets have locks on them, but outlets, anybody can plug into an outlet. No, they're, they're self-contained. So they have to be, okay. Mm -hmm. I saw Sarah down there. I remember, Scott, that when, and I may be off with the RFP, but for limiting it to other vendors, there was a year when we had a barbecue vendor at McGaw, and I remember the conversation for that it, is it's, one, from the Kona Ice, we'd received positive feedback from residents that they enjoy the service, and then two, it was more of a concern of that we're not getting any other interest, and if there was, we would review it and potentially allow it as well. Like, we, we allowed the barbecue cart um, but I think that was the only interest that we received. Right, and, and they 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 were there just for a short time, and they they just couldn't they couldn't make it. So, you know, at the end of the day, I like I say, it's it's a, a service, and we're getting, you know, we are getting four hundred dollars. So I have a question, another question, Scott or whoever else may remember, is that if in the past when Kona Ice agreed, they had no ideas of believing that they had an exclusive right to the park and, and during specific hours, correct? Well, they, they would. They, 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 they so, would for the splash pad. Right. I guess what I'm trying to say is if if Kona Ice started there tomorrow, if, some, if this were further along, and then uh, somebody else said, I want to sell something different than Kona Ice does, Kona Ice has the expectation of they've got the market for the summer and we're not going to bring in more competition for the same amount of dollars that walks in every Well, and, and, and certainly I think I, I think we, you know, as staff, I, I would not want to have a, a, you know, a second Kona Ice there if it's a barbecue thing or, or something different. I, you know, it wouldn't be a direct competition to the, you know, to the, the products that Kona Ice would sell. Um, so it's a, sort of at discretion. That, we, I, we don't have anybody asking right now, but just a no, hypothetical. No, Okay. And, and like I say, I didn't get any response back from them, so I, yeah. you know, I don't know. There's some, ins I think everybody feels uncertain, you know, how many people will go to the splash pad versus all our normal years. This is like a new test year, but Patrick, I see you. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if it's the same one that Sarah's remembering. I believe there was a hot dog vendor, as I recall, that came to McGaw. Is that maybe what? Uh, I'm not sure if you know if that was the same one or if that was another one? Boy, that, they were that, there for like a couple of times. The baseball players just didn't buy hot dogs and they folded and left and yeah, we never heard yeah. from them again. Why? But yeah, I would see if somebody has a barbecue or hot dogs or whatever that is not directly competition to Kona Ice, no reason okay, that so, we should not allow that too. Okay, and so Scott, what is your understanding of the RFP? timeline well I'd, I'd have to get it out they'd probably have to give it you know a couple of weeks to get a proposal back and mm -hmm. I, I just don't know how realistic it would be to to get an RP out there and then have someone come in in July and um, you know I, I if, if we were going to do an RP it'd be something that we'd want to do right after the first of the year uh, and like I say it kind of you know we've been going with Kona Ice for forever and I to be honest with you I did when he when he sent me the email I go oh man I you know, that's right, the splash pad is open, <laughs> is going to be open this year and all those kinds of things, so. Yeah, well, any um, other, a thought I have is that we could do an RFP for 2022 mm -hmm. and then we would be setting up a timeline where we have some su chance for success at following the process for this year, if you should hear from Kona Ice, then other questions come up like, is do we stick with $400? There may be other questions. Sarah? I guess I don't see any list, like any statement of exclusivity within this proposal. Yeah. Okay. But I, I guess so that's, I, I don't, I could be overlooking it, but I guess from my perspective, I don't really see a risk of us approving this then because if we had other 
interested parties, we could continue to consider those as well, just on a one-off basis. Mm -hmm. I see. But, but I, I, I wonder that Kona Ice, the, the, I think the thought is that Kona Ice is going to have an, ex that's why they're going to give us $400, because they're going to have an exclusive use. They're going to be exclusively the one that we're not going to be bringing in three other Kona Ices, and then that's going to cut into their. Okay, who left? I think we understand that, we, but we can bring like someone that sell, you know, sandwich or taquitos or I don't know, you know what I mean? So uh, we know that we are not going to be the compet a competitor, you know what right. I mean? But right. but I, th I, 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 when I read that, I, I, yeah, I agree with Sarah. There is no the wording or the language doesn't say it's exclusive to him. To him, right? And Patrick, you had a comment as well. Um, unless it is a complicated process, I, I, regarding what you're saying about we should be doing this at the first of the year, well, or not at the first of the year, unless it is a complicated process to put out an RFP, what if we were to just announce it and open it up, even though it's June, and if some vendor of some other product, not Kona Ice and whatever category we feel would be competition, but if something else, and if somebody wants to come along, and start something in, I guess, July or whatever the soonest would be, and then we kind of set a per month fee, let them start it, let them try it for a while and see if it works. And if it works for them, they may be more interested in coming back the next year. Rather than, let's say in a January, set a contract you've got for the summer, you owe us 400 or whatever, and you're committed then to be there the, for the whole summer, that might uh, scare some off. So, so are you saying then you'd be okay with Kona Ice starting like right now and then doing an RFP for a, a, a different type of vendor and yes. see how that goes? Yes. Open it up if anybody wants to start mid-summer or as soon as they could in, other, in another category. Let them try it and set a per month fee. This 400 is for the whole season, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, and sometimes, you know... Um, because I live like two blocks away from the splash pad, so usually on weekends is when you have uh, tons of people there. And maybe you have provided that they want to come only on Saturday or Sunday, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean that they have to be the whole week, you know, because, you know, so this is what we need to be flexible in the RFP too, you know what I mean? Like it, it, and, I, and I think even instead of a, you know, a flat rate, because I suspect they've got overhead and, and those kinds of things, so maybe you do a percentage, because I, I don't want anyone to, to lose money coming there, that kind of thing, but, you know, to encourage them to try it and see how it goes, even, you know, just try it and see how it goes, and if it works out, you know, it might be something we could do in the future. Uh, but I guess immediately I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about you know, corner ice and what you'd like me, what you'd like me to do with that. I guess I would make a motion to approve Kona ice, and I do like Patrick's idea of, I mean, open it up. And to be honest, I, I'll just, I know I'm repeating myself, but I honestly have heard positive things about Kona ice. I think people like having an option at McKee that, if it could draw up some interest and bring more people to the park, that feels like a good thing. And, and what I would do is I would I would kind of craft that RFP as a, hey, we've got we've got a big market down here. Is there are are you interested in trying to see how it might work this summer so that maybe we could try and work something out for the future? Go ahead. So the last thing is we need to change some of the dates and language and because you know so okay. Right. Yeah. Th th this was just the one that we worked on. Yeah. So we'd update that. And, and like I said, I haven't heard from Scott. But before I say, you know, go ahead, Scott, I, I definitely wanted to have you guys weigh in. Well, if me. you, and an idea I have is if you hear from Scott, if it looks like you're going to be able to move ahead, make sure he knows that we're going to do this other thing. Because he's had many years uh, of only the familiarity with only one process. So be fair to him that he in, knows in fairness, there yeah. might be mm -hmm. some additional mm -hmm. people. Go ahead. Very good. Uh, my final thing is um, it should be like a, uh, if, if we are okay with the $400 uh, as a fixed fee, it should be a fee because it's, it's, a co it's a commitment for them to come. Otherwise, if we don't say any fee, they can come whenever they want and there is no an expectation for the people that they are waiting for them. Though, you know what I mean? So I think 
if they are, if they had to pay something, you know, even 400 or, or whatever it is, there is going to be a commitment from for them to show up. <laughs> You totally. know what I mean? Uh, they need, yeah. Because they need to recuperate the money. So it's not like a, and it's more consistency in the providing the services. I don't know. Katie. I just wanted to com comment that it looks like Fitchburg has a street vendor permit that is $150 a year, $50 a month. Hmm. So there is an alternative if they chose to park on the street right outside the park. <laughs> Um, it would be $150 per year. In, Wait, Christopher. Oh. And I would just say whatever, um, uh, however the RFP is written, and if whatever the, the, the fee is in that proposal, we should probably make sure that it somehow relates to what's being you know given to Kona Ice. We don't want him to get an unfair deal compared to whatever these new vendors might get, because by the time that all goes through, they may only be there for a month or two, but. We don't want them to be paying, you know, pennies on the dollar of, of what Kona is already going to be paying us. Okay. So with all of this discussion, did we have a motion already? Yes, we did. Yes, I had a I made the motion to approve Kona Ice if Scott, um, but then to release the RFP to Scott's language of notifying individuals that this market exists and if they're interested it's available to them and we had a second second okay those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. opposed that motion carries all right now we're on to communication 6a and I think, Scott, you're going to tell us all about yep. it. Yep, and, and this is just kind of, um, uh, the Common Council did authorize, uh, Wade put together a, a couple grant programs for the, uh, for the hub. Uh, so I just wanted to inform you that we've got some grant applications out there for hub phase one. Uh, that's the um, item A. Item B is- oh, the One moment. Mm -hmm. Explain what hub is. It, it's a not, it's a North Fish Hatchery Road Hub Phase One project. Yeah, and it's a. I when my first meeting they were talking about the hub and I stayed quiet the whole time because I had no idea what <laughs> anyone was through. talking about. See, <laughs> you're a wily veteran now. I Sue. am. That's good. Yes. Got us. Uh, and Alder Aratafrata. What, what is he trying to get by us here? Yeah, Alder Aratafrata <laughs> here has done uh, uh, the lead work in getting it started. It's a yeah. project on North Fish Hatchery Road. Um, we can find it on a map another time, but it's in conjunction with an existing golf course, but there's a, sort of a dearth of play equipment and gathering space in that part of town. And so finally, something's being done. And, and, and I might add that there's other grant programs that we're, we're applying for. So uh, Wade's doing a heck of a job trying to, trying to get some money for us. Very um, good, okay. Thank you, Sue. That, that, okay. that, that, that's good. Item B. Keep, keep, keep me on track. Uh, and I'll just say Nine Springs Golf Course. That's yes, great it, because it, I saw NSGC and didn't know what that was either. So go ahead. Well, and this was, uh, as you recall, last month there was a resolution to, to add on to the existing maintenance building. Uh, but that, that did fail at, at council. The Finance Committee approved it, but the Common Council... Uh, did not approve it, so I want to let you know about that. Uh, item C uh, is the inclusive Scott, program. Scott, yep. is there any current um, idea, proposal, thought of what to do about the shed at Nine Springs Golf Course, or just dead, it, forget about it for now? It's it's. I mean, I don't know if you if you are well, thinking well, I, alternative of some well, sort. Well, if, if you if you look in your packet, page sixty-two, or excuse me, page sixteen, page sixteen of your packet uh, is actually the current Nine Springs Golf Course CIP. And what we did is we uh, we proposed an amendment to this to move the twenty-one thousand uh, dollars to twenty twenty-two, and then added fifty. 54000 from our fee in lieu of parkland dedication to have the $75,000 to do this 
uh, expansion. So it was a budget right. a budget amendment. So to your question, it isn't dead, if you would. It's it, still it falls back to twenty twenty six yeah, then, really. Yep, right? it's, it remains in okay. that in that CIP subject to any possible future Change, amendment that you, might be you know, made. Right, they might adjust it or, or whatever it might be. Good good question. Um, are we good? So then, a inclusive playground, which is item C. Um, and, and actually, I wanted to, to report that the, the RFP is out, uh, and it's due on June 7th. And actually, we have uh, two separate RFPs. We have one uh, for the design, uh, and we gave them, you know, Corey, who was our engineer, worked on the area. Uh, we put an RFP together, which identified the priorities. And then we put an amendment, or no, not an amendment, an alternate to that for installation. So because uh, there is thought that we may end up having uh, a local company interested in helping us with the installation, uh, but we wanted to get a price to, to see, you know, just to see if that price that someone else would give us would, would make sense. But there's, um, is it, um, did I include the RFP in here? I did. Well, just, just pieces of it. So I included the, uh, the cover page uh, along with the, the timeline. I will, I will note uh, that we did get contacted by uh, a, a playground provider and with, um, in talking to their manufacturers, uh, supply chain uh, timeline and, and thing like that, they, they couldn't meet the timeline that we had proposed. So we did do an addendum which uh, provided them with an opportunity to give us their timeline that they felt realistic in, in being able to, to get the project done. Uh, the second RFP is for the port in place. And again, we wanted to separate that out because we do have another potential donator uh, for the port in place. Uh, so that's a separate, um, and the thing is with the port in place, it, it has to be, as I understand, you know, it has to be a certain temperature in order to do that. So, you know, that may, you know, that may end up pushing it to the spring if they can't get, because as I understand, they install the playground first and then they'll, they'll do the port in place around it. So just kind of a heads up that we're, you know, we're encouraging people to give us uh, proposals and we understand the uh, supply chain and those kinds of things to let us know when you can do the get the project done. So it is moving forward. Um, what question on that? You said Corey. Is that Corey Horton, R.A. Smith, Horton, is doing R. A. Smith, the Smith, design yep. of this? Yep. Okay. They're, they're the ones that helped us put together the, um, the engineering and then the RFP that we sent out. Okay. Is all of that engineering design work done and now it is actually constructing the Well, the, the, engine, the preliminary engineering work was done because we had to figure out the site and we had to figure out the size of the site, the size and the shape, so that the playground people knew the, the area that they needed to work in along with the port in place. So that engineering is done. Uh, and we, we anticipate that we're going to be able to do a lot of the, of the excavation and, and those kinds of things in-house. Uh, to try and save to try and save money on it, but you know, with the uh, the floodplain and all of those kinds of things, we wanted to get engineers to come in and make sure that we had it at the right elevation and and, and all of those kinds of things. So, good questions. Um, so I di I did then include in your packet the the cover page and the details for the port in place RFP. Um, so that well, and then actually I did include uh, the you know the engineering that R.A. Smith did to, you know, provide the, the area in which the playground people need to make their design fit along with the uh, square footage for the uh, port in place. Okay. Any, anything else then on? Uh... Nope. 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 Okay, so we're I, at item D. Yep, the, the park and open space plan update. I will report that Wade uh, from the planning department, he will be coming before the park commission in July uh, to pitch what he what he would like to to do in order to update that plan. So, 
we can anticipate that he'll be here in July with the understanding that if we're, we're just kind of doing a, uh, 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 what do I want to say, we're not going to blow up the whole plan and, and redo it. Uh, if we do that, then we'd, we would have to, you know, hire someone else to come in and do it. But Wade and the planning department feel, well, actually feel that the document is, is a good working document that we could add to it and, and continue to work with the existing document. Yes, go ahead. Then a link to the current park plan. So we have, you know, can you send a, a, a link where we can find the parks and open space plan, the current one? Bef uh, yeah, that's a, that's a no, good question. No, because it would be nice I, for us to read it before, and then Wade is going to come with can, all the changes and say, OK. I, I can send that out to you, Julia. Okay, yes, thank and, you. and it should yeah. be on the. Yeah, thanks. But I tell you, our web page update is. We just don't, can't get to it. Um, I, I'll send out a link to the, and, and, and so I can, uh, I'm willing to make copies of it. If people are interested in a, actually a hard copy of it, I'll, I'll print one out and bind it for you if you're interested in that. Yeah, I have one. I picked yep, one up a couple yep, months I'd, ago. You know, let me, so would you, Julia would want one? Okay. I kind of flip back and forth I'd, between Heidi, Heidi, would you like, or just the link? Katie? All right, Julie, I'll, I'll, I'll get the link to everybody, but I'll make you a, a copy. Yeah. 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 You're welcome. Uh, the, the last item that I, I do have in communication, I, I apologize. I, I shipped it out early afternoon, and I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at it, uh, but I did include in your packet uh, the uh, All Swim. Well, it's a Seminole Hills pool group. Um, it's adjacent to Seminole, Sem Seminole Glen Park. Uh, they found out that they're going to try to host just a one-day event in July. Uh, and I don't know if you were here in 2016. They had a pretty big, uh, it was a three-day operational uh, kind of thing that, that they did do uh, at their pool, and they utilized Seminole uh, Glen Park. Uh, so I wanted to give you a heads up uh, that that is in the works. Uh, and actually, uh, the group uh, is going to come before we've got a large event committee, uh, which includes the police department, the fire department, the clerk's department, uh, public works, uh, the parks department. Uh, and I tell you, our police department and fire department are, are so good with these with these groups in regards to giving them plans and, and just helping them to make sure that it's a safe event. Uh, so they're all queued in and, and we're looking to meet with the group early next week. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a heads up and typically what I'll do is we'll just give them a, a park permit for, for that day. Uh, they'll get a sound permit which will, you know, circulate through the, uh, through the neighborhood so the neighborhood will know. And, and certainly I think it's, I believe that pool is probably part of that Seminole Glen Ho Homeowners Association I, kind of thing. So I think they would probably know about it anyways. But yeah. So because I was member of the pool for several years, and what they, is, the, is the all city swim dive competition that they are all the neighborhood uh, swimming uh, pool t uh, uh, team, they compete each other. So. And then they bring the competition to, um, they rotate every year the, the location. Um, they did a couple of years ago in Fitchburg. And now uh, it brings a lot of people from different, from Middleton, Madison, all this um, swimming team. And, and then it's good because people, it's like a two or three day competition and they invest, they go to restaurant here in Fitchburg, they bring money to the city, you know. So. But but this is just going to be a one just a one day event yeah, in yeah. comparison to 2000, and they'll use Seminole Glen mm -hmm. Park as yeah. you know if you're familiar with swim meets they'll have uh, you know pop up tents and coolers and families and, and all it's re you know really a positive positive event. So I wanted to uh, I apologize for the short notice, but they found out just recently, and the city is <coughs> helping them get through the the process so they can have their event. So, go ahead. Uh, it is this coming before us? If I'm thinking of this right, because in the Park Commission in the past, 
we requested that large events come before us to review, if I'm remembering right, mm -hmm. so that we can put in comments and such. So that's why we're seeing this, because right. it's considered I, a large event. It, it is, and, it, and it's similar. Were you on the Park Commission in 2016? I, I, don't, I think so. But, but this is, you know, just kind of a, a spin-off of that, that same event, so. That's what I'm remembering is the Park Commission requested large events come before us. Oh, certainly, certainly I wanna, it, it, for the first time. You know, if they do a repeat thing, okay. then, then I don't bother you with it. I might let you know, but we don't take action on it, if you would. Can I mention? Oh, yes. So I am, I am looking at the, it's gonna be the, the, the championship finals here in Semino. One day, yeah. First, I Yes, think. correct. Okay. So it's, it's a one-day event. We are pretty sure they, the neighborhood uh, that yeah, surrounds you. the park is notified that mm -hmm. would be taken they, care they'll, of. Yeah, they'll be yeah. notified. I, I guess I just wanted to, to let you know if yes. you see what, you know, a lot of people are in Seminole Glen Park, you'll, you'll know what's, what's going on. Yeah, it looks like it's already well-planned based on the documents they... Well, and, and, and I tell you, too, the, the, the fire department, they put together an emergency action plan, and, and it's really... They really do help help these groups, so which is great. Okay. Uh, we're done with our... Uh, is that? Did you have more, Scott, that you wanted to...? Nope, that's it. Okay. For today. And we have all of our, our documents from the various... Uh, Parks, Forestry, Recreation, Director's Report. You've covered it all, Scott? Yep, and unless there's, unless there's questions. No. Go ahead, Patrick. Is there, uh, so is there any uh, particular audio, uh, comments, uh, updates that you can give the Park Commission and the audience about what things are opening up again? Uh, community center, senior center, parks are taking reservations as, you know, we're beyond COVID. Do, well, it, it, from the uh, from the recreational programming standpoint, we are beyond COVID. We've got we've hired our recreational staff, and they're beginning to start to plan for the summer. Uh, park shelters are are going gangbusters, so I think everybody is is planning to have their events. Um, Festa Italia, uh, the one big event they were looking to do it in August, but they. They backed off on their large event, and they're doing a, a smaller a one-day event for Festa Italia. But all the other, all the other uh, community events are, are happening there. Ball diamonds are being rented. Um, the community the city hall and the community center is open for customers that come in. We haven't began uh, registering or, or reserving the community center for rentals at this point, um, but shelters are being rented. Um, you know, a couple, the uh, the pickleball courts, uh, th that, there was a big discussion, uh, because if you can, can you imagine that they, they take two, you know, it's two two lifts of, of, of pavement, and, you know, to try and, you know, those, those pavers, you know, once you have obstacles out there, it's, you know, fences and things like that, it's difficult. So I think they kind of worked it out where they're going to put the, 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 the base, base uh, layer or what in, and then the fence people are gonna come in and put the fence, and then the, the, um, the, the, the pavers will come in for the uh, second, second lift, if you would, after that. Uh, but that, they, that's why it was kind of uh, slowed, uh, because they were, you know, I don't know if you wanna call arguing back and forth, but they were trying to figure out how to, how to, how to make it most efficient for everybody, so. It was the logistics of who should be there first and well, and, to and work just, around that afterwards. Yeah, and trying to be fair to everybody and, and yeah, I did so. see that they um, mounted in cement below the gravel the posts that'll be for the nets. Yep. And I see a lot of uh, steel posts laying on the ground, which would yep. be the fences that go around it. So yep. Yep. I'm just watching how this goes. Yep. Yep. So that's, that's an update on that one. Um, splash pad, you said. Splash pad is up and running. That was that was open on Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> One of those two days. Earlier this week. No, were we off Monday? Yeah. Yeah, so Memorial it opened Day. Tuesday. It opened Tuesday. Tuesday then, yeah. which is good. Um, uh, CC is the um, our community center uh, 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 recreation coordinator. 
Uh, she's, she's here, she's been here for a couple weeks. Uh, and actually then um, uh, Samantha Schwartz was, uh, is Anna's assistant, the Park Forestry assistant. So she started this week. So we're, we're fully staffed. Jorn is trying to get his seasonal staff on board. And, um, but we're, we're off and running, that's, that's for sure. I okay. thought of something, Scott, the barn swallow structure the scout uh, created. At Burn? Yeah, uh, no, the one that you're going to Oh, at, at Dowley. Yeah, the, well, Lydia, if you recall, Lydia, the Eagle Scout project, she, um, she built it, dropped it off at Parks, and then Parks is going gonna, is gonna to get it installed next Wednesday tentatively. So Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Katie helped fix the uh, plan. I know, uh, well, and Steve Arnold, and, and I, you know, I, I'm going to end up going over that two-hour time limit if you, if you keep. <laughs> <laughs> but Steve Arnold, if you remember, Bike Fitchburg, they uh, donated that um, that bike repair. They they poured the slab today, so that's that's going to get ready to go in. Um, and that's at uh, King James King, Way, King, King James, James Way, Way Park. Park. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the community gardens are are going up and running? What is the correct correct pronunciation of our new recreational assistant that works with Chad Siegel? You see now that that's the uh, that's what you're doing is you're trying to you're trying to test me and I I would say oh. and you should ask Cece what, what that is. I did. What so you're so what so you know what it is? Yeah. Well, what is it? I believe <laughs> almost positive she says uh, Cece Stegi. Stehi. That could be. Almost sure. Thank you. On that, on that very important piece of information, especially to CC, um, are we ready to oh. sign off here? Well, and I did. Uh, I've got, got uh, future, a future agenda, agenda items. items. No, we've got future agenda items. Yeah, that that park naming thing is still is still hanging out there. Uh, that we've got a that I want to try and begin to start to. Get some resolution to that, okay. um, and then our next two park commission meet, uh, meetings are July first and August fifth. Uh, you have a list at towards the end. Of, well, let's see now. Last page of the packet on suggestions of park names here. So these are for us to consider and comment at a future meeting about. In in what my thought was is I was planning to bring that forward to to the group to see, but certainly if you. You know, take a look at that and see, see how you you feel about that. Uh, these these were names that were provided by uh, Tom Havel. Uh, he was part of the historical society, but a, a past planner here. So uh, those are some suggestions that that he he and his group came up with. Um, are we? Julia has a question. A yes, it's a question for Scott. Scott. Um, when we are naming new parks in new neighborhood, why we don't involve the community, the resident, we do a survey because, you know what I mean? You know, and, I don't know. Well, and, and, and I tell you, it, the idea of, of even having the developer or whoever it is that they come up with some suggestions, um, you know, and I think, I think that's, to, to some degree, that's what the 60-day process is, is that we... You know, we we publicly notice that hey, we're we're looking at mm -hmm. this name for this park. Mm -hmm. You know, does anyone have any other suggestions or ideas? So I think that, if anything else, I think that is a vehicle to try and get some some responses from the from the community. But you know, the whole idea of just hey, we've got these new parks. What what's a good name? I, I think it's it's better to kind of provide something to them, and then they they can kind of react to that. Well, and his. Historically, on this particular case, when uh, David Garter and I advocated for trying to um, involve groups, mm -hmm. um, and the idea was asking the historical society if they had any knowledge of specific people or places or events that would help us, and we gave them the entire list. Mm. Um, but in these cases, there wasn't a whole lot that they could come up with, so they were kind enough to just choose the obvious, yeah. but um, we do um, or should let the neighborhood association or in a case of a development that's not complete have knowledge or information going out there 
Um, Katie, I see you have a... I just wanted to make a comment that I think we should be careful about only going back to 1931 landowners as we choose park names, that there is an awful lot more history before that. Yeah, yeah. And we should take we'll, account. I had that thought too, and since this is just on here for our information until mm -hmm. next time, um, we can all <clears throat> gather our concise ideas. I have a real, I'll just end my remarks by saying I have a real hard time with the names of various lettuces <laughs> and then naming parks <laughs> after various lettuces. But, you know, we're kind of set up. I, uh, I, you, I'm just looking for names. I know. <laughs> you come up with names, however. I'm just yes, looking for do. names. So I can get a park ID sign out there. That's but what I'm I after. Think, <laughs> I think we need to do the outreach target to the neighborhood. When we say, okay, we need to have, we need to be open for 60 days for naming, and but we need to target the Ravesa neighborhood, and I say, we are looking for naming your parks, you people. Yeah. And then we target the other neighborhood. We target, and, you know what and, I mean? We and, don't and, and I think I think the idea of here here's just something, and, and they're going to say, man, what, you know, I could have come up with that. Let me, let me come up with something different. So I think if we give them something to kind of react to, I think that, I think that's helpful. So if I, Sent to to Vesa. <laughs> these are these are all the names that we came up with for your parks. <laughs> you send it out to your people and and see what stick. and see what they yeah. think. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um, anybody else? Go ahead, Katie. I have one other comment, just because we were looking at these at home and decided that the Terravesa ones we think we should name after salad dressings. I thought the same as thing as this afternoon. Salad, <laughs> salad dressings. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and then the problem, and, and another problem in that type of development is that, is, is that the smart code that dictates all these little bitty parks here and there, so we're not naming one park for the development, we're naming a gazillion. Well, and yeah, and I think, yeah. Yeah, it, that's it's, it's, a whole different discussion, but and like so, I say, I'm, I'm just, and, 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 and the idea of, okay, just as a de de the developer names uh, the streets, hey, you, you got you you to come up with a, the name for your, for your public space, too. You know? Well, you know, certainly they should be, they're still building out there. They're still selling lots, so that person would be, that group would be someone that gets the letter, too. And Patrick, I see you want. Uh, just a comment here. Um, on the list of names, or on one of them there, number four, which is No Oaks Ridge Park, as the suggestion right there. Um, just a comment here, because this is, you know, sort of not exactly on our agenda, but I did get a call from Joanne Jensen, who lives right next to that park, who was yes. interested in that being named Jensen Park, and she gave me some reasons, so I won't go into that now, but she had some background connection there. And, and uh, I've had, uh, not to digress, uh, they placed a rock there and I, I actually asked her to put together some text for history of that land that we could put on a bronze plaque and put on that rock, which I think would be cool. You know, just the history of that land that she knows. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, we have ventured far afield, but yes, yes we have, but no, we have not. Um, we're going to be very ready for our next meeting because we've, we're all keyed into the park naming issue. So we've done the announcements, actually, the next two meetings. Did you say that already, Scott? Ju July 1st, August 5th. And any other comments, or we'll look for a motion uh, to uh, please, please note of the, the time change. It'll be 6 o'clock <laughs> on July 1st, 6 o'clock. Star, star, star. And I thank you. <laughs> all right. Second, anyone? Second. All those in favor to adjourn at this time? Aye. 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 We it have adjourned. 825. Thank you.